So, I think, okay. Um, you know, I, I'm a radio personality, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I used to teach. Yeah. And I loved singing when I was little. So, do you think these three things are already hard place and rock for me? Yeah. <laughs> we need to... I need to choose to mm, yeah, to build up on my career. I can see why you'd say you were in a, between a rock and a hard place because if you choose one career, I you, need to give up the you, other. You have to give up the other. Yeah. So, yeah, that is that, 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 uh, is that a hard to place or rock? Yeah, to mm. an extent, I can, I can. Uh, I can what about you? Uh, myself, mm. coming to China or not? Going to the Commonwealth countries, mm. Australia, or whatever, or stay in I Africa. Think, I think being between a rock and a hard place is one of those. Actually, yeah, 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 a little bit. I'll tell you. Mm. Um, I had a job offer when I was uh, when I was leaving South Africa. In which know. country? In South Africa. It was a couple of years ah, ago. Ah, ah. And uh, I was due to come uh, study at uh, Tsinghua University, which mm. was one of the most prestigious. Yeah, definitely. And, um, but the job offer was very good. It was a career good that pay. I... But it's, yeah, pay wasn't great. In but line with your career. But building. it was a career that oh. I really wanted, you want I, that I could see myself doing for the rest of my life. Yeah. And uh, I had the option, you know, if I... The problem was, if, if I say I'm going to turn it down, mm-hmm then, uh, you know, I have to go to Tsinghua. At mm. that time, Tsinghua hadn't been finalized yet, so oh, I didn't know... Oh, pending. If, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to get it, so I was mm-hmm. kind of between a rock and a hard place mm-hmm. because do I turn down this job that I have now? <laughs> or, you know, yeah, for yeah. example, you know, if I turn down this job that I have now and Tsinghua doesn't pan out, then that's terrible. But if I, um, if I actually accept the job and, you know, Tsinghua comes Tsinghua. through, then yeah. I'm, I've lost that opportunity, oh. so... You could say yeah. it was between a rock and a hard, and a hard, hard place. place. And that is exactly what it is, is when you're in a situation where you have two kind of unsatisfactory... Is that a dilemma, actually? It's a dilemma, but between being between a rock and a hard place is also you have two unsatisfactory options. The, the, the two that we oh, kind of... Okay. The two that we've suggested is also that, yeah, 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 but yeah, to yeah. a lesser extent. Yeah. And uh, maybe you have to say... Uh, you know. One has to be made at the cost of the other. Yes, but both are not necessarily good things. Good things. Okay. So the examples that we've given are quite, you know, it's not. But my bad. example, like I love singing and mm. I love teaching, and yeah. it may not be that hard. But yeah. these are all my favorite things to do. But I have to sacrifice one. Yes. Or two. So for yeah. example, you can say I have to finish work today, uh, so I've still got a lot of work to do. But I also have to pick up my child after school. You know, I'm kind of, you know, stuck between a rock mm. and a hard place. Maybe mm, someone mm, can mm, take mm. one of those options away. <laughs> so that could be a way to say it. Uh, you know, oh, I think the most, um, kind of the most clear example is, you know, if you're in a relationship that isn't working and you say, I really love this person, but I have to, I have to end I love the other more. Yeah, but I have to end... <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, maybe, 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 maybe you have to end the relationship. And now it's a situation where the relationship isn't good. You know, it's not healthy. Oh. But also ending it, that's it's hard. even that's more hard. painful. That's hard. That's yeah, painful it's hard. too. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that situation, you're kind of between a rock and a hard place. Like, how do you, how do you end do, it? Do you think it, it comes to, um, actually applies to many, many marriages? Perhaps. I don't know. Because there are people who told me, yeah, I'm not married, but I'm married. Some, many people are complaining that, okay, and, you know, I don't want a divorce, although I'm so miserable in... In, you know, in this uh, marriage, because without a marriage is unthinkable to me. Mm, well, uh, you're going to be lonely, right? That is a that is a problem. I, hard uh, rock. I hope uh, I hope uh, whoever's in that situation is manages to uh, be able to sort it. But you know, so yeah, so uh, you know, kind of trying to please all of the different parties in an office, for example. Mm-hmm. You know, you could leave you in a rock and a hard place. You're trying to please both. Uh, the uh, management, upper management, and, and the and kind of the yeah, the employees. The colleagues. And <clears throat> it's an option that would leave both people unhappy. Unhappy. That's when you are between a rock and a hard place. You lose that, mm. actually, eventually. So you're in difficulty and you're faced with a choice between two unsatisfactory options. Origin. The, the origin of this is very interesting. According to phrases.org.uk, in uh, 1917, this is in, in America, I think it's in, uh, in Arizona, there was a lack of funding. Uh, oh. Because of a banking crisis, okay. which is actually very similar <laughs> to our time now. Financial crisis. Yes, mm-hmm. but um, there was a dispute uh, apparently between a copper mining company, mm. so a, co- a company that Com- mines Com- copper, mm-hmm. 
and uh, mine workers, the people who actually do the mine working. This mm -hmm. is in mm -hmm. Bisbee, Arizona. And uh, it's kind of it's tempting to, to assume that, that given that the mine workers were faced with uh, the choice mm -hmm. of both being between uh, harsh underpaid work mm -hmm. at the rock face, you know, yeah. the area where they mine the rock, yeah. uh, or on the one hand, uh, the unemployment and poverty on the other. In this instance, there's a literal rock. If we don't go down mining, mm -hmm. we're going to suffer poverty. Yes. So it's, it's, it's no, no one choice is a better one. Yeah, but We and, need to choose between the two bad choices. Working yeah. for very low pay at the rock face isn't going to be ah. uh, appealing so in this instance between a rock we actually know what the rock looks like I know. and uh, there's, a, there's an actual hard place which would be poverty mm. I, I, I chose this ag anecdote because I thought it was a good yeah. uh, example whether or not it's the origin I'm not necessarily certain I'm a little bit skeptical because I don't think you know it's a bit cute it's a bit yeah. too literal but um, it does it does go some, some way to explaining yeah. where um, where that kind of expression would come from. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something. It's like in China, the migrant so. workers here, right? A little bit. Yeah, if you can leave your family in the remote village, right, your loved ones, um, it's a hard choice already. Yeah. And then if you're coming to the city, the city is not friendly to you. Yeah. So in many ways, before they even leave, they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place yes. because there's no work there. But yes. But the work here isn't particularly good, so there isn't a lot of, you know, a lot At of At least they, they have to learn to adapt to a, a very unfriendly, unwelcoming society. Mm. Because we are, I think the city people are not really deliberately being unwelcoming. It's just that they are following their routine. I you see. know, they take no care of newcomers or whatever. But we, we shall, mm. you know, improve on that maybe, maybe in the future. Maybe there is a Chinese, Chinese example Definitely. Uh, we have, because we're talking about two difficulties, you know, one is the hard rock, uh, a rock and the hard place. So I think in Chinese we have, always talk about liang nan, two difficulties. And jing tui liang nan means either you go forward or you go backward and you choose between the two difficulties, it's not a good option. Mm -hmm. So that's jing. Jing means go forward and tui means to backward. So forward, backward, two difficulties. You know, it's like a catch-22. You don't yeah. know how to choose. Yes. And also we have a directional sort of um, you know, expression. Zuo yo. Do you know zuo yo? Zuo means left. left. Yeah. Yo means right. Yeah. Wei Nan being difficult to choose. Oh, okay. You know, I'm going to use my left hand or am I going to use the right hand? Both of them are, you know, yeah. maybe disabled. <laughs> All right. Before I got stuck between a rock and a hard place because I love teaching and broadcasting, as I said earlier, now I am fine, super fine, because I'm teaching English on radio. How about mm. that? Mm, yeah, it's combined, yeah. right? I d no longer suffer um, sticking between a rock and a hard place. This is a language cafe. The next time is, okay, the next sentence. Every time his mother and his wife quarrel, we're talking about the in-laws again, mm -hmm. right? He gets stuck between a um, rock and a hard place. Here I would salute to all men because mm -hmm. it's the hardest life, <laughs> hardest good. time when two women in your life Two loved women in your life quarrel. Mm. They're not on good terms. Yeah, I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Yeah, you you can to be a mediator. I yeah, you you should do. Yeah, you definitely. Do, you're doing your job. 每次婆媳嗯吵架呢，儿子都左右为难。我希望，爱与人， can coexist mm -hmm. in that kind of situation mm -hmm. to make men's life easier. This is a language cafe. I'm Lincoln. I'm Manling. This is Language Cafe. Welcome to Language Cafe, where learning is fun and fun is learning. I'm Lincoln. I am Manling. Manling, I know you are not a sports fan. No. Of course you know it's one of my great loves. Uh, Cricket. In the, well, everything really. Everything. You know, everything that really has a ball involved, I'm usually wow. very, very up for it. But... Um, Today's expression, I think, is very useful. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's an expression that you can often hear and spoken uh, in daily life. 
Yeah, you can use it in daily life because um, it's actually quite uh, it's actually quite clear. It's actually very self-explanatory in many ways. Formal, as, as informal, well. casual, um, everything. You, know, you can use it in business. It's one of also those. Also business. You can use it in business. You oh, can use it good. informally. It's a very uh, useful expression. And what it is is to drop the ball. Drop the ball. Yeah, you drop the ball. If someone if someone tells you, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be honest with you. I think you dropped the ball on that one. Then someone can say, oh, no, fair enough. It's also one of those things. No, 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 no. You're betting for that one? No, no, no. no. Okay. But you know what? You know what I like about it? Mm -hmm. To say that you dropped the ball. It's a nice way of saying, of saying that someone made a mistake. Oh. So instead of going to someone and saying, oh, you really made a mistake with this one. You can go to them and say, you know what? Honestly, I think I think you dropped the ball a little bit on this one. Try not to hurt, right? Yeah, it's a it's a very it's euphemistic. A, yeah, it's a very euphemistic, a very soft way to approach someone. Maybe you are a businessman mm -hmm. and you want to approach one of your uh, your employees. Mm -hmm. You can say to your uh, your employee, listen, I think you dropped the ball on this one. But that's okay because we're going to give you another chance. Yeah, this is said in not in the mood of being angry. No, it's it's. If the boss is very angry, he would never consider, you know, try to mild the yes, tone. Yes, yes. Right? So it's very much uh, a word where you, or a phrase that you can very use. Very humane. Yeah, it's a very, um, it's a, it's a, it's much softer, much mm. more, uh, much more euphemistic. Uh, but also, you can say, you know, as a warning, if you aren't careful and you keep going on like this, you will. Sooner or later, you're going to drop the ball. You're going to drop the ball. So you know, be careful as mm. well. It's a, so that also has that kind of cautionary, uh, yeah. so, so, sort of cautionary usage. Um, so you know exactly what I said. You know, you drop the ball with a new project. You know, people could be disappointed, and you have to be careful not to do that. So that's not what to, it means. Not to do it again. Mm. So that's what it means. It's the kind of to make a mistake mm. or to, uh, to disappoint someone, to let people down. Okay. And um, the expression apparently definitely from sports. It does. It does. It comes <laughs> from um, where a player who fails to catch a ball. Are we is, talking uh, about basketball? Minute. Well, I think this is actually baseball. You're running. Oh, baseball. Baseball. You know, mm -hmm. so you fail to to catch the catch the ball. You dropped it. Oh. Or if you uh, American football, you run with it. And, you know, it falls. But out. basketball is the same thing. Well, right? yeah. The thing is with basketball, mm -hmm. very much so with basketball, it's very much dependent on dropping the ball repeatedly. So rather, <laughs> are you dribbling it up and down. Okay. Out. So, out. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it, it kind of it's, uh, it's used for more general kinds of mistakes, yeah. like, like mm -hmm. the one we talk about in, in either in business or in our personal life. Uh, dates back to the 1950s uh, from the U.S. So yeah, a very a very useful phrase and uh, one that you can use in your everyday life uh, quite regularly. It's like a softer criticism, but uh, um, my understanding is it correct that um, it's not about a very serious mistake. Well, it, depending if, if on... If a disaster, catastrophic mistake, you would not really say, hey, you dropped the ball. No, not you necessarily. You made a terrible mistake. No? You, you might want to be euphemistic about it. So you might say, listen, you really dropped the ball on this one. Um, uh, you emphasize by using... Yes, really. really this but time. for the most part, it's used to kind of to casually broach uh, mm -mm. kind of uh, criticism mm -hmm. or uh, maybe some advice. Easier for someone to take. Yes, it's much easier to hear, oh, you dropped the ball, than to hear, you made a mistake. Yeah. So maybe there's something in, in Chinese, I imagine definitely. that kind of like couching something in optimism that way mm, would be something that would exist in the Chinese mm, language. Mm, mm. Uh, you got zala. Okay. Zala means you broke the glassy something. Okay. For example, the ball is made of, you know, glass, glass it could and be, yeah. um, you, you, you just broke it. Mm. Or you know, carefully, you just um, made a mistake. You know, it's not intentionally a mistake. Mm -hmm. It's um, out of carelessness. Mm. So, I see. you know, you try to hold it, but then you let it slip something, you yes. know, onto the floor or ground. Um, interesting. For example, we would say we entrusted the whole project to her. You know, we rely on her. But she dropped the ball. Mm. Hmm? We entrusted the whole project to her, but she dropped the ball. That means we thought she was the most capable yeah. person. 
and she's going to handle it well. But she couldn't. Yeah, but she didn't. We put the whole project to her. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. A, this is a relationship again. Interesting. Okay. A life. Some men. Some men play such game in their life. A life between your family, wife and kids, and the mistress. One day, you will definitely drop the ball. Well, yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah. You're very, so sure. It's a very difficult thing some to people, do. Some people. Some people think they can maneuver wow, such a life. Exhausting. Exhausting. <laughs> Yeah, living in hell is、oh, like rain. Shuttle between two lives. The <laughs> 家和小三之间，周旋，你总有一天会露馅儿的，或者会出事儿的。So we are expecting that man to drop the ball. Eventually, yeah.、Oh, Eventually. And then we will tell you, you know, what happened to him. Okay, this is the language cafe. I'm Man Ling. And I'm Lincoln. <laughs> Welcome to Horizons. I'm your host, Lucy Ray. In the mountains of southwest China's Yunnan province lives one of China's least known and smallest ethnic group, the Dorong people. The Dorong people mainly live in the Dorong River Valley, an area enclosed by mountains. The solitude of the group's habitat and the people's idyllic lifestyle help preserve their unique traditions. 无论这样飞越五千多米高的高丽贡山。Now to get to the Derong River Valley, you needed to climb over Li Gong Mountain, which is around 5,000 meters high. But there were only six months in a year during which Li Gong Mountain was accessible, because the rest of the time it is blocked by heavy snow. So basically, the Derong people lived in the valley, isolated from the outside world. The obscurity of the Derong village and their unique traditions. Passed on through generations as more mystery and novelty to this ethnic group. So, with today's horizons, we'll travel to the Dorong River Valley to explore the myths of the Dorong people. With the rest of the time, we'll find out about a magic mirror that is digitized and offers interactivity. The three-dimensional interactive fitting mirror allows customers to virtually try on the clothes. Allowing them to scroll between images with hand gestures. Oh, from the visual side, it's human movement. The interactive mirror works by motion capture, allowing it to immediately identify the shirt's size and shape. The software then tells the garment how to sit on the body, like how a dress hangs off the shoulders or how a pair of trousers hangs off the hips. Thus, the mirror can almost precisely. Tell people how an item of clothing, handbag, or accessory might look on, as well as suggesting the right size. For others, please stay tuned. In the mountains of southwest China's Yunnan province lives one of China's least known and smallest ethnic groups, the Dorong people. With a population of around 7,000, the Dorong people mainly live in the Dorong River Valley, an area enclosed by mountains. The obscurity of the Dorong village and their unique traditions, passed on through generations, adds more mystery and novelty to this ethnic group. Now we'll follow reporter Wang Ling to Yunnan to explore the myths of the Dorong people. The Dulong Jiang Township, home to the country's Duran ethnic minority people, lies in the Duran River Valley in Gongshan, Duran, and the New Autonomous County, in the northwestern part of Yunnan Province, along the border with Myanmar. The Duran people's namesake river, the Duran River, gushes from the Qinghai Tibet Plateau into the valley where they live. By the Gali Gong Mountain in the east and the Dandali Kam Mountain in the west, the some 4,000 Duran people living there were isolated from the outside world until 2014, when an 80-kilometer-long road 
including a seven-kilometer-long tunnel through the mountains, was open to traffic, helping make their enclave much more accessible to the outside world. Previously, the town spent half of each year blockaded by snow. Even during the summer, a man had to walk for several days just to reach the nearest town of any size. The newly completed road, whose construction cost 1 billion yuan and lasted four years, has shortened the journey to three hours. Yang Yuanji is a local resident. To get to the Derong River Valley, you needed to climb over Li Gong Mountain, which is around 5,000 meters high. But there were only six months in a year during which Li Gong Mountain was accessible because the rest of the time it is blocked by heavy snow. So basically, the Derong people lived in the valley, isolated from the outside world. One of the country's poorest towns, the Duran's average income per capita is only one-tenth the country's average. Through the new road, countless trucks carrying workers, cement, steel bars, and other materials head for the town deep in mountains. The local government is working to help the town shake up poverty and build a tourism industry around the area's stunning scenery. have long lived a traditional lifestyle of farming, hunting, and fruit picking. Every spring they plant corn and wheat using slash and burn methods. Children and women pick fruits and dig up wild yams, while the men go hunting, reciting prayers, asking the god of the mountains to bring them fat prey. The Duran are historically known as the Chu and didn't have any particular name for themselves until the establishment of the People's Republic of China. Nor do they have a written language and use the tied knots and wood carvings to pass on messages. The solitude and idyllic lifestyle also helped preserve the traditions of the Duran people, among which are the distinctive and mysterious fist tattoos worn by the Duran woman. Kang Guoqing is head of the Duran village. At age 12 or 13, Duran girls would get the tattoos as a rite of passage. There were two kinds of patterns common in different regions. One was a whole face tattoo that spread like the wings of a butterfly. The other was just a few lines on a chin. Facial tattoos for Durham women are just like the makeup for today's girls. While serving a cosmetic purpose as well as a traditional one, the process of getting a face tattoo is more painful than how women apply makeup nowadays. The tattooist would first paint the design on the girl's face and then puncture the skin with a sharp bamboo stick. The process was finally finished by filling the design with a mixture of soot and herb extract. The red swelling disappears after a week, leaving a permanent dark blue design on the skin. There are different interpretations as to why Duran women have their faces tattooed. Some say it's for the beauty effect, some say it's for self-protection, to scare off evil spirits and bandits, and some say maybe it's just a way to distinguish from different tribes and clans. No matter what the original purpose was, the process is for sure full of pain. Nowadays, few Duran women are willing to undergo this pain of their As a result, this unique tradition is a fading away. There are only some 20 Duran women left with official tattoos, and most of them are between the ages of 60 and 80. This means that facial tattoos among Duran women will possibly disappear within a decade.
chân sư dị sư gỡ rong rong mà do ma mây sư ca bê sư dạ tà văn kế văn phong ở tân linh dị groups in China, the Duran people are talented at singing and dancing. They sing about their lives, expressing happiness or sadness. Wu Xueyuan, deputy director of China Traditional Music Association, says much of the Duran's history has been passed on from generation to generation through songs. The Duran people have used the singing to record their history, to remember their heroes, and to narrate their bitterness and happiness in life. Duran songs are, in fact, an encyclopedia from which you can learn every aspect about the Duran people. important occasion among the Duran people, during which they hold feasts, sing and dance. The word Ka Chiwa is a transliteration of the Duran language. It means to gather the clan people for the worship or the New Year festival. This is the only traditional festival of the Duran people. The date is rather flexible, fixed by a consensus of the extended family or the individual village. Sometimes, the New Year takes place at the end of the 12th lunar month. The length of festivities ranges from two to five days, depending on the existing food stock. The New Year is both a celebration of the harvest and occasion for cattle sacrifice. An offering is made to the deity who is believed to have created humans and to all of the nature spirits. On the first day of the festival, the Duran women hang their well-woven flax fabric on a bamboo pole and place it on the roof of their dwellings to usher in the beginning of the celebration. All clan members will then get together to sing, dance and sing festivities often carry on throughout the night. The distinctive blanket is also one of the Duran cultural features. It is usually one by two meters in width and length, respectively, and is traditionally made of flax. The Duran people used to wear it as a gown during the day and sleep under it as a blanket at the night. Now they usually wear it as accessory. They stowed with those valuable cultural treasures from their ancestors, Yang Yuanji says he's grateful and is proud counting himself among the Duran people. I'm proud of my fellow tribesmen. They all have a remarkable history. They have made their living and created their cultural values in this remote area full of hardship and difficulties over centuries. Although the Dero have a small population size, they developed a distinctive culture, providing their descendants with a rich cultural heritage. Time has changed. The Durans are living a new life and stepping out of their village to the wilder world. As a new government program is helping them benefit from China's rise, about 4,000 Duran people have left their shanties and moved into new houses. The Dulongjiang Township now has a small hydroelectric power station. Primary and junior high schools, the garbage depends on the radio and the TV towers. Networks and on a mobile phone signal cover the whole town. A total of 1,068 houses have been built, all with the same design. The government has purchased each household a television, a washing machine, and a disinfection cabinet for dishes. government-led efforts, the Durants have seen substantial changes in the past years. 
The villagers had started to sell pepper and walnuts, and the township's per capita income exceeded 2,500 yuan. While modernizing the Durans, the government has tried to 